Hi! In this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom style buttons using Android Studio. So by the time you're finished with this video, you're going to be able to create a square button, a round button, an outline, a gradient colored button, a circle button, and this odd shaped button we'll call it, and then a button with a shadow on it. So this is all done in the layouts of a Android project, and it's all with styling. So let's get started on that right now. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach software development and computer science at Grand Canyon University. So what you're watching is part of a whole series on how to build Android applications. So if you want to become better at your software development, make sure you subscribe and check out my channel at studycoding.org. You'll find all kinds of things to make you a professional software developer. So let's get started with how to build these buttons and so the style comes out more unique than the usual gray square that comes with most projects. So there are three ways that we're going to modify the standard project and I'll give you a preview of how that works and then we'll go do it from scratch. So first of all, we're going to use the themes area and we are going to put in a custom theme name up here and that will be the first change. The second change that you're going to notice are in the drawable area. So we will have something such as the circle button which will have its own formatting here. And so I'll take you through all the steps on how to create the rounded corners and the different ways that you can shade the button when it's at rest or when it's clicked. The third item is in the activity main file and here we're going to see that there is a style name that is going to be associated with each button and so you can see it here as background. There will also be some fonts and text settings but the main part will be in those style XML files. So let's create a new project and show how this works. So this version is slightly out of date and by the time you watch the video there may be other changes. But I think what you're going to see here has been standard practice for some years and so it should be re relevant to you even if it's not quite the same version. So it's time to start a new project so we can demonstrate what's going on. So I'm going to start a new project, choose the empty activity, and let's call this thing the button example. Make sure that your package name is something unique, so I'm using my name so that way it is unique. Now you can choose either of the languages here, either Kotlin or Java. We're not actually going to code anything, we're just going with the layouts, but you have to choose that. I'm going to choose an old version of an API so that it's more universally used, and then click finish. All right, so in a few seconds the project is up and running. Now let's make sure that we've got everything we need. So we're looking in the layout folder for activity main, and that's where we're going to start with all of our work. So actually, I don't even need the Java folders, so I'm going to collapse them so they're no longer in the way. Now I'm going to build a whole bunch of buttons on the screen and then stack them on top of each other. So let's go with our hello world and let's remove the lower constraint. So I'm going to delete the uh, bottom constraint so it now is near the top. So to get things started, we're going to do a basic square button with a custom color. I'm going to place a button on the screen and attach it to the bottom of Hello World. Let's do a left constraint and a right constraint. Then we're going to have ourselves a button in the middle. Now, the first thing I want to do is change the color of this button. So the section of Android Studio where you're going to change these things is in the values area. So you can see that there's a colors folder and a themes folder. So if we were to open up the colors, we would see that there are some standard colors that are already defined for our application. So you can see a small thumbnail sketch or a chip you might call it. And if you choose by hovering, you can see a preview of each of these values. So each one of these represents a specific color. By the way, I rarely just start choosing colors that are random. I usually go to a website like this if I'm going to do a custom color theme on an application. So if you just search for custom themes or color themes, you'll come across sites like this one at Canva. So if you notice, these are supposedly some kind of a artistic selection of colors that blend well together. So let's pick a section here. And you can see that we've got some kind of a citrusy color. Now if I wanted to use this color, I can just hover over each one of these and the copy message shows up. So if I just click it, it has now copied that hexadecimal number and I can use it in my application. Now, since I copied that and I wanted to use it in my application, I might just be able to put in here a new color. And let's give it a name and I'm going to call this thing, I don't know, Lime. 
and then I'm going to paste in the value that came from that color swatch. And so you can see the little preview over here shows a limish color. So let's go to the uh, activity main again. So I want to change the background color of this purple button. So I come over to the attributes over here and I type in the word background. And sure enough, there is a color that shows up. So let's go ahead and try background tint. So I'm gonna click here and I'm actually not going to just paste in the color. I'm going to choose the little selector item. And as soon as I do, you can see that Lime is now one of the colors that's saved in my application. So let's try out Lime and see what happens. I click OK, and there is Lime. So sometimes I've seen this where the change does not actually take effect. It still stays purple. And usually I can fix that going by going into the themes area. Now in the themes area, you have a theme section called its uh, name right here as dark, uh, what's that say? Dark with an action bar. Now if I were to delete that, I can start typing and see that there are other options. Now you can see that going through the list, there is a large number of themes that are already given to us. So just by experimenting, you can select something and uh, let's see what that does to the change. So if I push the control S to save that and come back to activity main, now it doesn't look like a whole lot, a lot different now, but if you were to add new buttons, you would see default colors that would be different. So let's try running the application to see what we get here. So you can see that the application is working with the button. One change that I like to make is to have uppercase and lowercase letters. So I'm going to search for the attribute called caps and change it from true to false. So you can see that the letters now on button are both uppercase and lowercase. All right, now we're going to add a custom attribute so that the color is and the shape is going to be somewhat different. Now to make this change, I'm going to select the button and then I'm either going to choose code or split for my choices. So the important part is that I can see the XML diagram that describes all of the layout. So I am interested in this section right now, which defines this lime colored button. So you can see one of the uh, properties that we changed was here, color lime as background tint. Let's change a property for the text. I'll change it to the word square. You can see that the change occurs over on the right preview as well as it does here in the XML. I'd like to add a little bit of space between the hello world and the top of the button. So that property is called margin top. So typing in margin allows me to choose from the selections and then I put in a value such as eight density pixels or eight DP. So now you can see that there's a small gap between the two controls on the screen. Now I'm going to provide a XML file, which is a custom definition for this button. So in the properties here, I'm going to choose the word background and I'm going to set it equal to a value in my resources. So the folder that I'm interested in is the drawable folder. I'm going to put a forward slash and then invent a name that will be associated with this button. So I'll call this square underscore button. Now you can see that when I choose that text, it gives me red text to tell me that there is an error. Nothing is defined by that name. So we can ask the computer to help us. So I'm going to choose create a drawable resource folder or file. So I select this and now I've got a few options that I don't quite understand yet. For instance, what does selector mean? What does main and drawable? So I'm just going to leave the defaults and choose OK. And then I will understand a little bit about what's going on here. So first of all, it put the file here in the drawable folder. And you can see that the item is called selector as the first tag and the closing tag. Now you can put a whole bunch of descriptions between these selector tags. Let's put an open bracket to see what suggestions come up. So you can see that the only thing here is the word item. So I'll press enter and then I'll do a close tag. So the word item is going to define something about this shape. Now let's see what kind of options go in between items. So I'll put another open bracket and you can see that the, there's a whole bunch of other things. There's layers, and more shapes and selectors. So I'm interested in the word shape right now. And let's see what we can define for what shape this should be. Now I'm going to put a space here after the word shape and you can see more suggestions. So I'm going to choose the first item here called shape. And now it says, what kind of shape are you interested in creating here? So I'm going to say, let's make this a rectangle. 
Inside the shape area, let's put in another bracket, and you can see more choices. This time I'm going to choose solid, and this allows me to pick a solid color. So the next item that comes up as a suggestion is Android colon color. And now I can select one of the colors that I have in my colors palette. And just a few minutes ago, we chose lime. So I will select lime for this one. So let's go look at our activity main now to see what has happened. Oh my goodness, it has defaulted back to the purple shade. What happened to lime? I have lime up here as background tint. Well, this no longer is being uh, affected apparently, so let's delete that. And let's now change the theme. So I'm going into the themes area, and where it says uh, theme light, I'm going to just put in something else. So I'm going to delete all the way to the word theme, and I'm going to choose um, compat, app compat light no action bar. Let's see if that helped at all. Okay, so now this theme apparently allows me to use the custom background. Okay, does this look like success? Maybe. Let's go ahead and run the application and see what it looks like. So it looks like we got the application up and running, correct? However, you can't tell, but I am clicking on the button and there is no response. So I can't tell if I clicked it or if my app is frozen. It's not a very good user experience. We need to add a click response. Let's go back into the design. So back to the design, I'm going to the square button file and uh, let's take a peek at what this is all about now. So the first item, literally item, is defining the button in all states, whether it is at rest or it is being clicked. Now what I'd like to do is to have two different states. So let's go into the first area called item and put a space. And you can see right away that the suggestion that comes up first says Android state pressed. That's the one I want. Now it says in the next option, is this for the state being pressed to be true or false. So I'm going to say this is for false, where it is not being pressed. Now, this will only show when the button is at rest. I'm going to add another item to handle the state when the button is being clicked. Now, the easiest way to do that is to copy the entire section and paste it below. And we're going to have an error. So you can see that we are defining the same state in two locations. That's what this orange is all about. I can fix this error by changing the word false to the other property, which is true. And now they are distinct. So in the when it's clicked property being true, it uses this color. Well, this color looks a lot like the other one. So let's call this thing lime dark. So it's going to be slightly darker when we click it. Now let's uh, go ahead and define that. So I'm going to choose create a resource. No, I'm going to go to more actions. And in this time, I'm going to create a color value called lime dark. And uh, let's just put in some value right now. I'm going to choose some horrible red color so we know that it is not the one we want, but click OK. And let's go find out where that was defined. So back to my colors area. So this file called colors XML. And you can see that at the bottom of the list, we have lime and then we have lime dark. So the lime dark is supposed to be slightly darker than the previous one. So let's copy the lime and paste it over top of lime dark. Now I'm going to select the little colored box. And for lime dark, I'm just going to move this circle down a half an inch or so. And you can see the preview is slightly darker. So now the preview shows a light and a slightly darker color of lime. So let's save that. So now if I go back to the square button shape, you can see the preview shows a slightly lighter and a slightly darker version of my app. Now let's run the app and see if that button now responds differently that we've created two versions of the color scheme. So here's the square button. When I click it, you can see now it gives me some feedback. So the color of the clicked status is a little bit darker. Now, if you'd like to see how to do the rest of these, such as square, and round corners, and outlines, gradients, circles, odd shapes, and a shadow, then check out the links in the description below, and you can go to studycoding.org, where you can get the full course on building Android applications. So I'll see you over there at the other channel real soon.